he's recommending here that if you want to clean the dirt from the heart, first of all, what is the dirt that's in the heart? The dirt in the heart is that I think I am this body and that I can enjoy this body. This is the unwanted thing that is there in the conditioned soul's consciousness. And here it's recommended that if you want to clean this dirt, this false idea that I am this body, that I can enjoy this body, and all the things that go along with that, if you want to clear that from the heart, it's recommended here that one should render service to the Brahmins and the Vaishnavas. And in this way, when one's heart is clean, then one can be satisfied. In this material world, no one is satisfied. Due to this discrepancy, due to this unwanted thing in the heart, that I am the body, I can enjoy this body. And along with that come so many different anxieties and hankerings and lamentations. So how to get rid of it? Well, it's not possible even if you uh, develop all the 24 qualities of a Brahmin, even if you take <coughs> uh, help from mm, group therapy, mm, no matter what you do, it's not possible to become free from this uh, anartha, this unwanted thing, this dirty thing in the heart, that I am this body and I can enjoy this body. It's only possible by the mercy of the Lord. The Lord has mercy on those who do what he says, and what he is saying is, render service to the Brahmins and the Vaishnavas. Now, Prabhupada explains who's a Brahmin. Hmm? Uh, we see that because of Kali Yuga, interesting point he makes in Kali Yuga, the, the Rakshashas, the demons, they take birth in the family of Brahmins. And therefore we see that the so-called Brahminical caste system that we have, the, the persons born in Brahmin families are least interested in Brahmin activities. They want to become engineer, they want to become an uh, IT coder. <laughs> they don't care. Srila Prabhupada, when he came, before he came to America, he went to some respectable gentleman and he said, please give me your sons and I will train them to become Brahmins. And the reply was, Hare Swamiji, why you become Brahmin? We want our sons to become engineers. So he went to America, tried to make some Brahmins there. And the same persons that are not interested in Brahminical activities, in the real Brahma Karma, the same persons criticize. Srila Prabhupada, oh, he gave Brahmin initiation to the Malachas, the Yamanas. This is not good. Right? Same persons. So what is a Brahmin? Brahmin, uh, the activities, the one who's performing the activities of Brahmin is a Brahmin. Doesn't matter what their birth is. Doesn't matter. Hmm? If someone is born in a Brahmin family and performing the activities of a Shudra, then he's a Shudra. He can't claim that, oh, I'm Brahman. This is the Brahman. And the fall down of the Varnashram Dharma was this conflict between the higher caste. We see in the Bhagavatam how the Brahman Sri cursed Maharaj preacher to die within seven days. When his father, who was garlanded with a dead snake, awoke and understood what happened, 
He was very sorry, very unhappy that his son had cursed the king because there was this proper coordination between the Brahminical class and the Kshatriya class. When Lord Ramchandra returned from Ayodhya to Ayodhya from the forest, they, at that time they were going to coronate him as the king. And at the time of Lord Ramchandra's coronation, and all the Brahmins were there ready to perform the sacrifice. And Lord Ramchandra declared to the Brahmins, this kingdom belongs to you. You are the representative of the Supreme Lord. It's stated in Bhagavatam that the, mouth, the, the, the Lord eats through the mouths of the Brahmins. So you take this kingdom which was the whole world. And what did the Brahmin say? The Brahmin said, my dear Lord, uh, you, you take this kingdom and you manage it on our behalf. We're doing other things. What are those other things? Yajin, Yajin. They perform sacrifices and they teach others how to perform sacrifices. Mm -hmm. It's a very important thing, performing sacrifice. In all the religions, they perform sacrifice. Mm -hmm. In the Vedic religion, Vedic knowledge, they perform sacrifice. Anāda bhavati kūtāni pārcāryāda sambhava yadya bhavati pārcāryāda By performance of sacrifice, you get rain. From rain, you get grains. And grains are required. Can you just imagine in South India what would happen if there was no rice? <laughs> no lemon rice, no dahi rice, no tomato rice. What would you do? Huh? So how this rice is coming? From the rain. And how rain is coming? From yajna. The Lord satisfied, the satisfaction of the Lord, there's rain. And you can eat your rice. Otherwise, no chance. So who performs this yajna? The Brahmins. But where are the Brahmins today? So, understanding the urgent need of creating some Brahmins, Srila Prabhupada went to the West hmm? to teach some people how to perform devotional service, how to become purified so they could actually perform yoga. But what kind of yoga? Well, that the topic is uh, we see sometimes there are these uh, Agni Hotras perform. They're putting ghee and grains and chanting mantras. But because in Kali Yuga, this type of yajna has no effect. No, no effect. Why? Because the proper chanting of mantras is not there. The permit that, that kind of Brahminical cages to chant the mantras and light the fire just by chanting a mantra. It's gone. Right? They used to test the yajna, Ashra made a sacrifice, was testing the Brahmins' ability to chant the mantras properly. Right? And by that, the, the cow or the horse was sacrificed, and from the fire would come a new body for that same uh, living entity. New body by chanting mantras. Anybody can do that today? Anybody can light the sacrificial fire by chanting mantra in the, to the Adrani wood and fire come? No. They have to use matches and put some camphor and matches. Right. So that's not working. Well, what does work? What is the uh, 
They're talking, what is the sacrifice they're talking about in Kali Yuga? Who can tell me? Yagnaya Sankirtana Prayi Yajanta Yusana. Yagnaya Sankirtana. That is the process. The Lord and the Lord's holy name are non different. The Lord is non different from his form. We don't worship in the temple marble stones. No. We're worshiping the form of the Lord. And the form of the Lord and the Lord are non different. In the same way, the Lord and the Lord's holy name are non different. The sound vibration of the Lord, name, and name are non different. So by performing that sankirtan, which means congregational chanting of the holy name of the Lord, that is the yogi in this age. By the performance of that, one can please the Lord. By performance of that, you will get grains and there will be grains. But even more than that, from this we understand, that by performance of the Sankirtan Yajna, all the impurities can come out of the heart. So service, so, so first of all, one becomes a Brahmin by performing Yajna, by understanding the Shastra, teaching the Shastras, Gyan Pratigraha, giving knowledge. And teaching that knowledge. So Srila Prabhupada emphasized so much that we should uh, read his books. We should read the books. He said that just like you eat to keep your body fit, if you don't eat, you won't have energy, right? Like on Janmashtami day, everybody fasts up till 12 o'clock. And by 12 o'clock, all the devotees are completely exhausted. Mm -hmm. Then they eat a little something, some Ekadasi Prashadam, and they get some more energy. Mm -hmm. So we eat every day. You don't eat once a week. Anybody here eat once a week? No. Two times, three times in a day to keep the body fit. In the same way, they keep their spiritual body fit to keep our food for the soul, we have to read. We have to read Shiva Prabhupada's books. All problems are solved. All questions are answered by reading Shiva Prabhupada's books. Everything is there. And we'll stay fit, spiritually fit. Because in spiritual life, it's not about spiritual strength, although we should keep the body fit because if the body's not fit, you can't pre even perform devotional service properly. The body should be fit, should be taken care of. One time Prabhupada was, I believe it was in New Vrindana, he was giving class. It was winter time. So, so many devotees were coughing, right? Coughing. And Prabhupada said, <coughs> took to the manager and said, listen, you provide them all with proper sweaters right? and chadras. If they're not warm, then they'll become sick. That's why they're all coughing. But why is that? Why? Because if the body is not fit, then it's very hard to do devotional service. Why do you do devotional service? But the real thing is making spiritual advancement, and that spiritual advancement comes about by uh, cleaning the unwanted things that are there in the heart. There's so many uh, material attachments. We have so many material attachments. First attachment, this body, I am this body, I'm attached. Then I'm attached to the extended bodies that are connected with me, my family members, and my community members, and country members, and it just goes on unlimited. Hmm? Attachments, we're attached. 
But how long is that attachment going to last? Let's think about it, analyze. Hmm? How long are we going to be in this body? It's all connected to the body, attached to the body and those things that come in contact with the body I'm attached to. But how long is it going to last? You know? How long do people live nowadays? 80 years? If they're lucky? Huh? So after that, then what? You change bodies and you get a whole new set of attachments. When the son of King Chittaketu was poisoned by the other uh, wives of King Chittaketu, and he had died, and Narada Muni and Parsa Muni came to see, meet Chittaketu just at that time, the king requested him, bring back my son, bring back my son. So they called back the dead soul of the son to enter into the body, and he woke up. And then King Chetra said, Oh, my son, my son. And that soul replied, I don't know which father are you. I had so many fathers in the past. Which one are you? And then King Chetra came to realize that his attachment, right? and all of us are the same. In so many lifetimes, we've had so many mothers, so many fathers, so many different material attachments. Why are we thinking this one is so important? So important. Huh? Due to our material condition of life. Our conditioning. We're conditioned. But by a little bit of knowledge, a little bit of transcendental, uh, <laughs> understanding and service to the Brahmins, service to the Vaishnava, then that unwanted thing in the heart can be changed. Parivarta, change. Viplava, revolution. What is that revolution? Right? Freedom from the British? No, not freedom from the British. We already had 75 years of freedom from the British. What great thing happened? Huh? In Calcutta used to be the garden city of Asia. Now it's the armpit. So what is your liberation? It's not liberation. The old masters were the British. And the new masters are corrupt politicians. What is the difference? Hmm? But real revelation, revolution, is a change in the heart. You change the heart. So this, the Lord is instructing Prithu Maharaj. That can happen by service to the Brahmin, service to the Vaishnava. By the mercy of Lord Krishna, we've come in contact with Srila Prabhupada, who is the first class Brahmin and a Vaishnava. Being a Vaishnava is not an easy thing. Just you'll put on tilak and have kanti mala and do some, you know, nishnishana, nishnishana. And you're a Vaishnava. What? But no, it's that easy. Coming real Vaishnava. It's very rare we found. Very rare. Their only business, their only business is to satisfy Krishna. And Krishna's only business is to satisfy them. And Krishna says that <coughs> my devotees are in my heart. And I'm in the heart of my devotees. My devotees don't know anything but me, and I don't know anything but them. Who did he say that to? Durvasa. Durvasa was running here and there to become relieved from the effects of the Sudarshan Chakra because he had offended Maharaj Ambarish. He was in big anxiety. It was burning his back. He was going here and there. Went to Lord Brahma, here, there, finally went to Vaikuntha, he met 
Lord Narayan. And he told him this. So finding such a person is very, very great. Not ordinary thing. So if we are fortunate to have association of such a person, huh? and we render service to that person, then the anarthas in the heart can be cleared away. So, Srila Prabhupada has given us instruction to distribute books. Why? Somebody tell me why Prabhupada told us to distribute his books. Tell me. So we can get some money. We can make life members. Life members don't want the books anyway, so, we, you know, it's a pure profit. Hmm. If you open up a factory, then you have to make some product. You have to have a building. You have to have workers. Right? But if you make a life member, just go out and get a donation. You don't have to do anything. Right? Money will come. So why Prabhupada said this to why? Tell to make a fine human beings. To make what? To make fine human beings. Fine. Fine human beings. Fine means better human beings. Sorry, right? Sorry. To, to make better. 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 Yeah. To imbibe yes. our good qualities. To make who better? To, to make who better? Self and others. Why not ourselves? Self and others. Self and others. Exactly. We're helping others and we're helping ourselves. Srila uh, Prabhupada said, if you want to please me, then distribute my books. When Srila Prabhupada was in the Denver airport in the year 1976, he came through and one reporter asked him, what will happen to this movement after you die? And Prabhupada said to that reporter, I will never die. And all the devotees in the airport went, Haribo! Because I will live forever in my books. One can understand a Vaishnava not by seeing. Right? Someone might have the biggest tilak. Right? Big, big tilak. Big, big, big kantimala. Big, big japa bean. But it might not be. How you understand the Vaishnava? By listening, by hearing. By hearing their discussions, their attachment to Krishna, you can understand the Vaishnava. So, Srila Prabhupada's in his books, and by distributing the books, we become satisfied, we become satisfied. And that satisfaction will come about because we'll get some realization from Krishna that we're not this body, that we're the eternal spirit soul. Hmm. So therefore, now I found Das Thakur was saying that birth after birth, I want to serve the lotus feet of the devotees. Serve the acharyas. Serve the acharyas. So we have our line of acharyas. Shri Prabhupada, Shri Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, Kaur Kishor Das Babad Mahachandra, Bhakti Mnod Thakur. It's our line. Some others may have their line, but we have our line. The uh, uh, works of Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur, his Sharanagati, his different books that he wrote with beautiful poetry, songs, actually songs. And we sing every day Bhaktivinoda Thakur's song. Gora Artik, who wrote it? Bhaktivinoda Thakur. 
Josie Puja? Who wrote it? So these, this is our life. This is what we follow. Hmm? By following that line, same line, Srila Prabhupada was able to spread Krishna consciousness all over the world. So why we should look for some other line? I see devotees go to Vrindavan and they go to this Baba and that Baba. But do they accept Bhakti Vinodhaku? If you ask any one of them, where is the birth site of Mahaprabhu? They're going to tell you it's in Navadri. But what did we learn from Srila Bhaktivin Otaku? Her sight is in mind. The yoga pits. How many here have been to the yoga pit in mind? And to confirm it, he brought Srila Chaganath Das Babaji Maharaj who at that time was over 100 years old, and he was carrying him in the back, they used to carry him in the basket because he couldn't walk. But when he came to the birth site, the Bhakti Thakur had found out by archaeological survey, studying of the Shastras, and realization it was confirmed by Srila Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj. He jumped out of the basket and began to dance. So we have our life. We should be, what do you call it, like the wife is chaste, chaste wife, one husband, not four husbands, five husbands, one husband, right? Chaste wife. Same way, we should be chaste to our line. And our line is coming from Bhakti Yoga, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Dhamma. Before that, before him, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, Vaishnavism was only being a Babaji in the Vrindavan. There was no organized preaching. He started the organization of the preaching. And Srila Prabhupada followed that as his guru on that stage. His God is organized <coughs> for preaching, spreading the message so that people get an opportunity to become purified, free from the anarchists that are within the house. So are there any questions? So we, we, we should become Brahmins, become Brahminically qualified, right? to perform the yajna. What is the yajna? Sankirtan the yajna. What is the knowledge? The knowledge in Srila Prabhupada's books. We should uh, carefully read all Srila Prabhupada's books and give that knowledge to other people. Right? This is service to Srila Prabhupada. Mm -hmm. Extraordinary. Uh, opportunity that we have to render service to Srila Prabhupada by distributing his books. Very extraordinary. When there was one <clears throat> Brahma, when Prabhupada said he was a real Brahma, Sampat, Sampat, Sampat Kumar, Sampat Kumar, I think his name is, isn't it? I believe in Madhva. So he was invited to come to Hyderabad and do the installation of Radha Madanga. He came. Sri Vaishnava. So later on, Sri Prabhupada became very sick in 1977. He was helpless and very bad. So the Sampat Kumar, Sri Vaishnava, Prabhupada said he's a Brahmin. He came to Bombay and he wanted to advise Bombay. He said that, you see, because you've established your murti in Vrindavan on the altar and worship it, and many people are coming, the reactions of their activities, their sinful activities, are coming to you. Therefore, you're in this condition. 
And uh, like that, he was coming before God. And Prabhupada replied to him, You don't understand. This is why I have to come. So then that Sampat Kumar became astonished. And he circumambulated. He circumambulated Prabhupada three times. Then he went back to Bangalore. Srila Prabhupada ki. So, uh, yeah, we'll end there. Thank you very much for listening. Hare Krishna. Srila Prabhupada ki. Shishi Radha Vinoki, Jaya 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 Jaya